All right, Dave. <clears throat> Dave Mason, everybody. Hey! From DJ Thunder, 1970. Used to make VC videos. Now he's only in my videos. <laughs> That's right. So not many views. I didn't even tell Dave why uh, we're recording this. I've tried making this video in the past. Oh, by the way, it's still broken. And the doctor said that uh, it's not doing that good. So I have to see an orthopedist Monday. So uh, the downfall is I... He can't figure I've had, out. there's like oysters in here, and I, <laughs> I just have to live with it. So if you hear some whistling, <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on. All right, Dave, so I am going to do the exciting talk on how sound works. And the reason why I wanted to bring you into this is because when I was doing the video, I was just talking, talking, and I'm like, wow, none of this makes any sense to anybody who, who's not me, who it's understands exactly sense. what I'm saying, right? So sure. sound waves. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is, uh, again, back to the old vi uh, drawing that you all saw of digital audio, right? Where it's all little dots and people go, yeah, but it doesn't capture the sound in between, right? You've heard that argument before? Sure. Yeah, th that argument is uh, nonsense. And I'm going to show you why. And don't worry, I'm going to give you um, counter arguments. So that way it it'll be basically what you're trying to say but it won't be factually incorrect. So that's what we're doing here. Sure. So, Dave, sound is what? A waveform. You got it. It's a waveform. It is a push and a pull of air molecules. And it doesn't actually have to be air molecules. It can be uh, water. Um, you can hear underwater. And um, whales communicate by pushing and pulling the water molecules. And it travels a lot further. Um, than air. Solids transmit sounds better, but if you ever notice, they're not high-pitched sounds. They're very low-pitched sounds right. because uh, low-pitched sounds travel a lot further, which is why when you're in your house, you can hear the jerk with his stupid subwoofer in his car, right? right? But you don't hear the tweeters or anything. You right. just hear... Mm -hmm. yeah. Just the bass. Yeah. Just the bass. So a sound wave is a push and a pull push and a pull and the lower the sound it's pushing and pulling less the air not saying stronger but the sound wave right for example one hertz would be on a sine wave a push and a pull so imagine that's one second right two hertz would be I'm already running out of ink. Push and a pull, push and a pull. Okay. Three would be right. three of those in a second. It just, it, each time gets closer and closer and closer. You got it, right? Got it. And, and here's the crazy thing that like, you know, you all kind of knew, but you didn't really. You didn't know. You, did, you knew and you didn't know, right? All sound are basically made up of those sine waves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just multiple ones all at once so I'm talking here I might have like you know uh, a thousand Hertz and a Hertz is how many cycles of the push and pull right. happen and so I could have a thousand I could have it like 1500 there's something going on there's something going on 2000 and all of those at different volume levels but all at once right so have you ever heard of a square wave Dave no well, so a square wave like if you looked on an oscilloscope would look like this. A square? It looks like a square. Get out of but wait a minute. Chris, you said sound waves were a push and a pull. Right. Well, this is still a push and a pull, but on a, when we're looking in the time domain, we're looking at one second, it looks like this. If we were looking at a frequency domain, where it tells you how many of those hertz, right? Mm -hmm. It would be one at 1,000, and then somewhere at 2,000 would be another line. And somewhere at 4,000 would be another line. And all those added up together make the picture of a square wave. A square wave is... What do you hear those? Is a frequency with all of its harmonics. And it looks like this. Mathematically, it's doing something called a Fourier transform. So complicated that I can't even pretend to show you. Uh, so I'll link below and show you a great YouTube video. Four minutes. That'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about there. So, Dave, yes. sound is pushing and pulling. 
and you're talking and I'm talking at right. once. If we had perfect, exact voices, mm -hmm. our voices would just blend Combined. together. You couldn't hear. Our brain is able to hear all those different things at once. Like a flange, how they combine and all of a sudden they're the same pitch almost, but you kind of hear them spread apart slightly. If we took a recording of me talking and then another recording of me talking, saying something different, all of a sudden our ability to hear the two different things would not work out so well. It's because of his pitch and my pitch are different frequencies. Sounds a bit pitchy. Mm -hmm. So if you take an organ playing a, a note and a flute and they are sort if, if you combine them because they are similar mm -hmm. all of a sudden it won't really sound like an organ and a flute it will sound like an organ flute sure sure or goot or whatever this is how that mp3 compression works right because it knows that well those things are so similar that you are, aren't hearing certain parts of it and it starts discarding all that information how well it does, listen, that's that's not what we're talking about, but that is how MP3 compression works. So instead of, if it was, the computer was scanning from zero hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz, it would see all the different frequencies going on and it would say, oh, I really don't need that one because you can't even really hear it because this thing is louder and that thing's louder and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you're saying it's being omitted. It's being omitted because instead of saying, well, why am I even recording this? That guy can't even hear it because that's the way the sound is working. So, back to the original premise, right? The thing of, well, what about all the sound in between those lines? Well, we know that this is one hertz because it's got one push and one pull. The only data you need to know is it's one hertz... That's it. And what the volume. Right. All those dots, it doesn't matter how many times it's sampling a second because we know that's one hertz and it's volume at right. that point. Okay. What happens if it was half a hertz? A half a hertz you wouldn't hear. Well, that's not true. You would hear. But, right. Yeah. right. But do you understand what I'm getting at? So, sure. right, you, you can't have 23 and a half hertz. It's either, you know. Right. Yeah, they're whole numbers. There you go. All right, Dave, we're rounding up, and at seven minutes, I think we're doing pretty good here. Yeah, I mean... Do you have any questions that have gone over so yet. far? I All think right. I've got a handle. So... Your pen's working again. It, yay, when you keep it down. So the Nyquist theorem, this is a mathematician thing. This is the thing that we talk about in digital audio, right, is if you want to make sure you capture something, you double the frequency that you're capturing. So if we want to capture all the way up to 20,000 kilohertz, so 20,000 hertz, 20 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz, 20,000 times a second, pushing and pulling, right? Mm -hmm. We need to capture at twice that. Why? Because we'll know we've caught it. Because we've caught the push and the pull. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, didn't know that. So the idea of not having sound, oh, you're missing all the sound in between. Well, I'm not because if I'm capturing at twice the rate, it's the I've captured everything from zero to 20. Okay. There is no, it fell through the cracks because of the sampling time. Okay. Eliminate the cracks. Because I've made sure I've captured all of the plus and pull. Now, the argument you digital people should use is, well, it doesn't do a great job. The machinery that's doing that is not doing a good job. That, yeah. That is a completely valid argument that you don't really have to prove. You just have to say it, and they're like, oh, okay. But the idea of it, well, it's not all the sound in between, you're not capturing. There's no such thing. Okay. Thank you. You're I welcome. Didn't, I didn't know anything. There you go. Yeah. So, also something to think about. Right? Remember, all we're trying to do is make a voltage show up. On a speaker, a speaker knows how many times it pushes and pulls by the voltage and by how loud all the different parts are. Okay. So at any given point. So when you think about all of that with digital audio, it's just trying to make an electrical signal. That's all audio is. That's all the record needle is doing. As it vibrates, it's making an electrical signal. Right. And it slows down. And then it goes faster. And then it goes slow down. And it goes faster. As it goes and tracks through the groove. Because the groove is not perfect. That's okay. 
huge cave that it goes into, actually. Yeah, that's right, and that's what makes it vibrate. And then this thing is very, very weak, actually. Mm -hmm. And then it gets amplified and blown up into a voltage. And then through your amplifier, mm -hmm. and then makes your speaker push and pull and move air. So that way it can go all the way into our ears. <laughs> and then inside, all the little hairs and stuff that's going on in here turns back into an electrical signal to the neurons, all the way up to the brain so we can hear things. Knowledge is power. That's how audio works. This was much better than the other time I recorded it. And, uh... Number one. We're number one. <laughs> Always. All right, so, Dave, say goodbye, everyone in the VC. Goodbye, everyone in the VC. We, we uh... Sorry it's been so long since I had a video, and thanks to Chris, I'm now back in, in the YouTube's world. So, thanks, Chris. Want to shake on it? Oh, never mind. I'm not going to shake on it.